Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. Today will be a slightly longer video. We'll look at how to create this Luva window system. It looks a bit more complex in this photo, but if you go and look at one single unit in the system, essentially it's this one. So you have a frame for the window and an array of Luva units spanning the entire opening of the window itself. So how can we make this in Revit? Let's create a Luva window from scratch. We can now start from new, a, not a project, I want to start new families. And it's important, actually crucial, that you start from the right family template. In this case, let's use metric window. Feel free though to use a, uh, an equivalent template if your company has one. So, we are now greeted with this single host wall place here is the opening cut object. We're going to work with this. I find it's a best practice to stick with this object anyway, as opposed to um, removing it and replacing it with your own uh, in-place void to cut the wall. That's just more messy. So if I go now to the exterior view, we can create our first item here, which is for the window frame. Let's do it by using a sweep. And let's set our sketch plane to be the right one. Before doing that, let me show you where the sketch plane should be. If we go to reference level now, it's this one I want to use. The name is center front back. And the reason is I want the window to be centered along this center plane of the host wall, as opposed to attaching it to the exterior face or the interior space that will make it less flexible. So, remember this name, center front back. We can now return to exterior and create our first sweep in the family. Click on set and choose the plane we selected, center front back, do OK. And now before you start sketching lines, make sure you're in sketch line mode. If I go here now, I can see it is not yet activated. I want to click here first to activate the mode for sketching path. And now I'm going to pick some reference planes in place already. When I want to pick them, I want to lock them as well. So I want to tick on this locked button. Lock and click. Click and lock. Yes. Now we can trim them to make sure that's a closed valid rectangular loop. Go to 3D now and see the result looking great. If I now do finish, you can see now we are redefining the profile of the frame. This is where you can have two choices. One option is to edit a sketch in place and then just draw a rectangle like this. But for me, that's not the best option. It's usually much better if you load in the profile family from externally. That is easier to control to standardize across the practice and it's easier to change it later on if you have to. So for now, let's go and make a new second family. And we can go for this time with the metric profile template. This is where it's a bit confusing because you don't know which side should you place the uh, profile lines in. Should it be in this quarter or maybe that one, maybe this one, I don't know. The best thing to find out is to test it. So let's make a rectangle anyway. You can make this profile at, uh, at least a rectangle like this, or maybe more complex. For now, let's go for 100 by 50. We can change this to be more complex later on. And I want this profile to also be centered along that wall center line. So let's do that in here using this as an equivalent. Next step is to create a way to control this profile parametrically. Firstly, I want to make sure that is aligned to this. And now we can save the family. Let's call this one frame profile. And now it's time to load it into the window family. It's already loaded. I can now do select profile and use the right one, frame profile. Check it, 3D, I can see, it's not having the right rotation. If I select it, I can rotate it by 90 degrees now. 
that looks great. We can now make sure it's parametric. Let's go back to this profile family and add in a few dimensions. I'm going to go from here to there to there. Make sure these are equal. And then the sum of them should be the profile width. On the other side, this should be profile height. Select that. Go to here to make a parameter. And this one will be height. The other one as mentioned before, we can call it width. Save the family and load it back in here. Now, if I go under Families, Profiles, Frame Profiles there, and the Frame Profile type is here. Double click to open its properties, I can now change it to make sure it's flexing properly. Undo the change and finish my sweep. If I hide this whole wall for a minute, you can see that's the frame we just created. Also hide this opening cut. I don't want to see it right now. So far so good. Next step is to create our Luva unit. And the way to do it is by, again, creating it in an external family. We can then later on load it into here. The plan is to place a Luva unit underneath this phase of the frame. It's going to be the top unit. And then we can array that top unit down across the whole width or height of the opening to finish our Luva system. So it's time now to make that Luva unit. Let's go and use the generic model template. It's good for template. It's good for generic stuff. And now in here, I want to make sure the reference plane is added so I can control the length of the unit later on. Just like with everything, we can try to center this unit along the two default reference planes, left, right, and then front, back. To do so, I want to make sure these three planes share two equal distances. And then their sum will be the width of the louver. Not width, sorry, it should be the length. Now I'm ready to create my sweep. That sweep will be the geometry of my Luva. We can now go and make sweep. Sketch path again. And in here, there's only one blend to use, so... I show you that. And in here, there's only one blend to use, so... I show you that there are three, but the only one making sense for now is level. Let's choose reference level. Pick and lock, and then ensure this goes only from this plane to the third one. Click finish, and now I'm ready to go to 3D. See my profile there. Now, just like with the frame, I would like to create a profile for my Luva. New family now. And we can go for metric profile one more time. In here, I can try to say... This line should be the cut profile of my Luva unit. Maybe this will do. And just like any Luva, we need to give it a rotation angle. We can try 50 degrees for now. And then I'm going to make sure it starts from here. Or it starts from here. Okay, that should be the origin point for placing this later on. Now we can go and save this as... Luva Profile. Next step, I think you guessed it, we need to load it into the Luva unit family. Now I'm making a mess here with the family naming. I know family 1 is a window family, so family 3 should be the Luva unit family. We'll rename this later on. And now that's ready, I can now select profile and got the profile there. Let's pick it. Amazing. However, let's save the family first before I forget. Luva unit, that's a good name. Now, if you look closely, we're missing something here. If I go back to this system, it has cut up a gap there between the frame and the Luva unit. We need to create two new reference lines. 
both going up and down this view and then make sure we can dimension this gap. I would then select both and assign them to the same parameter. Let's call this side offset. The name is there, but the typo is wrong. Let me go and fix this. Edit family. Remove the eye. And keep it a value of maybe 50 mil. It's good enough. Now I can edit my sweep. Click on the path to select and then edit the sketch. And then make sure it goes from the new plane to the other new plane. Finish to confirm. And there you have it. Finish to confirm. And there you have it. Now it's locked and loaded, ready to go. Let's bring it into family one, the window main family. If you really want to challenge yourself, <laughs> feel free to try and place it in 3D. But for me, it's much easier to do it from a plan view. Let's go here and we can go create component. That's a lumen unit there. We can now click on this point to place it. You can immediately see a problem, do you? But let's save the family first. Let's call this main window. So the problem I pointed out before is this. This frame is centered along the wall center line, but this Luva unit is not. That means we need to now change the profile of the Luva. That I'm gonna move it this way. Now that's better. We can now load it into the Luva unit family first. That's the first layer up the chain and then up one more layer to the window family. Much better now. Next thing to fix is the Luva unit's length. And something's telling me it should have some relationship with this width here for the window's width, but not a direct relation. It should be the window's width minus twice the width of the frame because we have one frame here and one other frame width there. We can do that easily now with a formula. Let's go in here and make our new louver length parameter. This can then be width. I'm going to copy this name and paste it here into the formula column, the column. That makes it now 1000. Now we need to obtain in some way the width of the frame. So let me accept this for now. Select the frame and we don't see that parameter anywhere because it's actually part of the profile family. The profile family you can find it under here. Profiles, frame profile, frame profile. Double click over these properties and here you have it. That's the parameter we need, the height of the profile. So now I want to report this in this main family for the window as a parameter I can use in my formula. The way to do it is this. Select the parameter you want to link. Click on the button at the end of the line there, associate family parameter. And now we can make a new parameter in this main window family, which we can then associate with this nested family, which we can then associate with this nested family parameter from the frame profile. We can now call this one, usually the same name should be fine. I'm gonna go for frame height and link it up just like this. That does one thing for me if I go now to family types. Frame height is there for me to use. I can now control C to copy its name and then change up this parameter formula to say it should be width minus two times the frame height. When we're here, you can see and I, I, I intentionally didn't use any spaces or any special character in the name of the parameters. Yeah. If I do, for example, a space between these two words in that parameter name, that could be now mistakenly be considered by Revit as two different that could be now mistakenly be considered by Revit as two different parameters. Or if I do maybe a dash there, 
Rafid may see this as a minor sign. That's not good enough. So make sure you don't use any special characters or spaces in your parameter names. Now that's 900, looking promising. We can go OK to accept. Nothing changed this yet, because I have to do one more step. I need to select this Lua unit. Open this type properties. And now for the length, let's link it up with Lua length. That's neat. We can now see that's the right value. Click OK now to confirm. And now that looks great. Now if you pay attention closely, these gaps seem a bit big to me. That means I will now have to put in the two brackets on both sides of each Luva. You can see the same in this photo editor family for the Luva unit. I can see there's a gap here for me to do this. Before we go there, however, I want to make two new reference planes. So you can see why in just a second. The first one will be from here to there. The second one, same but on the other side. Now this value can be the width of the bracket. Before we go there, I want to make sure that we need to align that endpoint of the sketch line to this plane. Make sure that's confirmed. OK. And now the bracket width, we can now turn that into a parameter as well. And the width we should give it a more meaningful value, maybe something like this. We should give it a more meaningful value, maybe something like 20 should do. And now it's time for the width to be used. Yeah, let's go to 3D now and we can create a bracket. If you really want to be thorough, you can create a bracket in an external family and load it back in. For now, it's simple enough for me to do, so I'll do it in place over here. Let's do an extrusion and set the work plane to be this tiny little vertical plane on the side of the louver. Once that's selected, I can now pick the boundary of my louver like so. And maybe give it a slight offset of 5 or 3 millimeters. Untick copy and press tab now to offset the whole chain of lines. We can fix that very unusual <laughs> thickness length later. But for now, let's do the same on the other side. Create. Extrusion again. Set the work plane this time to be the other tiny vertical plane. And then go pick lines. Tap to pick the whole chain. Offset. Tap to pick and offset the whole chain again. And finish. It's time now to go back to floor plan and say, let's give this a meaningful value it deserves. I want to go and snap it there and lock it. On the other side, the same story now. Snap it there, lock it there. Go to 3D, looking great for me. Now we can bring this back into our window family. And there you have it. Quite a realistic Luva unit except for the fact that it's now on the level it's not really in the window even so time to fix it now if i go to the left view i can see clear has to go up let's bring it up now go to move move it up from the level to this plane now you can see it's clashing with the frame a little there so we have to make in here a new reference plane to maintain an offset let's go this one top offset and a value of 80 is a bit random let's do 50 or maybe a hundred and now I'm free to move this first lower unit down somewhere along there However, if you remember, our window is fully parametric. So when this window height changes, I really want this first Luva unit to follow the top of the new frame. A unit to follow the top of the new frame. Otherwise, the whole system will be out of sync. 
To do so, I want to make sure that this lower unit is locked to this plane by an, another method. And this is the method. If you go to the Edit Family, you go to the left view, you can see that it's this plane we want to lock into the other plane in the family for the window. For now, it is not pickable. I can prove that to you very quickly now if I go back to the window family and do an alignment from this plane there to that plane in the family. It's not available for me to select, you see that? To make it selectable in the main window family, we need to go back to the Louvre unit, select the reference plane, and then make sure the ease reference parameter is set to be something else. Not a reference won't do. Let's try strong ref and then load it back into the window. Do the alignment again. And this time you can see it's lighting up for me to select. Align, then lock. If I now change this top offset parameter, let's see what's going on. Maybe we can go for 75. There we go. Looking amazing. Next thing, we're almost there, is to create the louver units as a array. And we can do so first, only after we specify the spacing between louvers. We can now go and make a second reference plane here in this section. And then a dimension from here to there, call this spacing. That will be the spacing between any random two back-to-back -back louver units. I'm going to set this to be something else at the value. And now we can start arraying this to be making that into a system. Let's select it like so and create on array. Make sure you go and select the second item in the array this time. And just go and pick it anywhere forwards or downwards in our case. For the number of items initially, let's put it 7. And here you have that. Now, that's the reason why I didn't try and place the second item where it should be. Because now, it's time for me to do the alignment. So I can intentionally have the constraints in place. Let's do that by align that to this. And nicely, as you can see, the other units, they are following this new layout, this new spacing. Next thing to do is to specify the number of items in the array. For now it's 7, and I think that's enough to cover specify the number of items in the array. For now it's 7, and I think that's enough to cover the whole height of the window. I can now select that number there, and turn that into yet another parameter. This one can be unit count. And certainly enough, because it's there, I can now access it from family types. Make sure that's visible at the same time. Yes. It's down here under other default seal height. Oops, not that one. Unit count, the one below. If I want it to be in the same group with dimensions, I need to now edit it and change the group to dimensions. Now it's up there with the rest of my guys. We can now go and give it a formula. Initially, let's try window height divided by spacing. And that gives you almost there. You see, it's trying its best to say, give me 18 units. But in return, I'm getting two units there clashing with the frame and the wall respectively. To make sure that's not happening, we need to uh, take this number there and minus that by the number 2. Okay, now that's working. What if I try to say, do it in a cleaner way? This is kind of a hack, and it's not sustainable. We want to make sure that the Louvre unit count is derived from the right height. It shouldn't be this height there, that's too big. It should be the height between the bottom side of this frame in this area, and the top fade up the same frame, but down there. We need to get 1400, not 1500. And the way to do it is by creating a new parameter. Just like with opening width, 
we need to have the opening height in this case. I want to make a new parameter now and then call it opening height. You guessed it, it should be a formula derived parameter. I'm going to go for height minus two times frame height. Very similar to the one above it, but this time we get 1400. And now I can confidently copy this name, control C to copy. And in here, replace height with clear opening height. Take away that messy minus two for the moment and then see what's going on. So this time we get only one clashing louver and we can take it out more easily by just doing a minus one. A minus one. I know you may say it's not looking as different from the last one, the one that I called messy, but that's a big change at least because if you now change the height of the frame, make the frame profile bigger, that height in the middle will report the correct value. So that minus one there, it will always be minus one. It won't be minus two in some cases and minus three in another one. That's much more messy. So minus one for me now in here is clean enough. And there you have it. If I now go to 3D, it's looking a lot like something I can use in my project. Now I know what you're saying. That gap at the end there is a bit big. How can I do this so it makes it look better? The key now is to um, make sure you can get the spacing right. Spacing is now a random value. But, but what if I can do maybe 90? Or maybe something more realistic like 100? Yeah, 90 looks better. So that's one way to do it. The other way, if you really want to have equal spacing between them, is that you need to specify not the second item in the array, but the last item. Let's try and do that. Let's try and say I want to select all instances in the view, except from the first one, and delete them for now. This one we can ungroup and return to our left view. For this second array type, I can now select this, do array again, but this time select the last item. Click once to go and click another one to finish. Seven should be the number of items for now, but I can of course select that number. Now that's 15. And now have I moved this louver up a little? You see the number maintains but I can have now control over the last louver unit's position. And because I can, now I can place another reference plane there and then make sure this can be my offset that I can control. For now, for simplicity, I can use this top offset again down here. But you know, for sure, you can just give it a name like base offset so that it can have a different value. So, next step is to align our last louver unit to this new plane and then lock it. And you know what? Now it looks like this should be another parameter because now there's a clash there. Let's go and unlock this parameter. Give it a new parameter now. Our code parameter. Give it a new parameter now. I'll call this base offset. And the base offset can now be maybe twice the top offset. So copy this, go to base offset, times it by two. There you have it. Now, whatever happens, I know the spacing between my Luva units should be consistent and meaningful. All right, it's time now to test this in a new project so we can be Sure, this is our triumphal achievement for today. Okay, now to start a new architectural file. Place a new wall in here. And I can now load this into this new project number one. I want to place it there. And just, and just like that, it's 
looking nice and fully parametric. Let me prove it. If I go to edit type, change the height to maybe 2000. It's adaptable. If I now go and change the width in the same manner, making it bigger. There we go. Now I know at 2 meters in width, this louver unit may need some support in the middle. But that's, uh, I'll leave it to you as homework. The best way to learn is to do it yourself. Materials, parameters, naming, convention, that will come in later, as you wish. But here is your fully parametric window family. You can change other things as well, like spacing. That's for someone really confident with their privacy. For me, maybe I'm going to go for something lower. Maybe 90 mil is fine. That should be it for this family. So, have a try for yourself. Build these families from scratch. That's the best way to learn, as I said. And if you have any problems at all, do a comment down below and I'll see what we can do. Have a good day, guys.